Hello and welcome back. So now that we've pretty much got the train manager jamming along, it's time to revisit the patch builder. Yeah, once again, back to the patch builder. So what is it, once more into the breach, my dear friends, or something along that lines? Yeah. All right, patch builder. Where is our patch builder? Our patch builder is over here. Okay, cool. So once again, define the problem. Um, stuff and things. Very good. Yeah. Basically, it, it's not so much a problem as an optimization. Right now, we've streamlined the process so that inside of the train manager, every time we run through the, the loop and we're checking our handle train panning, we're looking at the player's position and we're looking at the direction that the camera is facing. We're going to try to load up all those patches in that direction if they're not already loaded. Now, the thing is, is we can move the camera in between the time that those patches were queued up and the time that they're calculated, especially if we're moving the camera really quickly or we're moving at quick speeds. What's happening is more and more patches are being added to the queue in the patch builder that may or may not need to be drawn anymore. Mm -hmm. Because let's say you're facing north, you queue up 50 patches to be all um, loaded in, and then you whip the camera around to the south. Now you're immediately looking to the south. Well, what happens is we get a lag for those patches in the south being created because it's still building all the patches that you told it to that are facing north. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the patch builder and we're going to do a verification process that just says, hey, you know, are we still looking in this direction? Do we even care if we build this patch right now? And if we don't care, we're going to just remove it from the queue. We're going to just drop it out. And then the tr uh, train manager will requeue it if we need to at a later uh, point in time. Right. Okay. So it's just to streamline things. Mm -hmm. Now – this gets to be a bit of a trade-off as well because nothing's free. If you are using large um, numbers of patches, let's say you're using this system with patches that are 9 by 9 and you try to push it to the extreme and you've got you know, 400 patches all viewable at a time or maybe you try to do 1,000 patches – what you're going to find is that there's going to be so many patches in the queue all the time that you're going to get a performance hit by going through and traversing all those patches every update. So it's going to be hit or miss. It works great with lower number of patches, but the uh, trade-off, the performance gains you get start to slow down or um, negate themselves at larger number of patches. But on the flip side, it also helps you not draw 500 patches that you don't need to. Right. But you will notice your frame rate suffering. So where should we start? Well, let's see. I've got this here and I've got this here. I think I'm going to make a new method here. This one's going to be called public static. And this is in the train manager, not the patch builder. But you'll see why here in a sec. And we've got void... I'm going to call this rescind. How do you spell rescind? Well, oh, that's not right. Is that right? No, oh, that's probably not right either. Is my spell check going to pick it up? Oh. Um, hold on a sec. I've got just the tool for finding this type of stuff out. Rescind. And come on, Google. Yeah, what do you know? That is how you spell it. Nice. So I was right. Doesn't happen often. That's why I was kind of surprised. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> We're going to take in a vector two. Call it position. Now, I want to have a resend and a remove because the remove is going to do some um, processing of our patch. Basically, clean up the mesh and check it into the mesh pool or the object pool, and it's also going to do some cleanup stuff with the vertex cache. And then it's going to remove the patch from the patch's dictionary. I don't need to do all that extra stuff with resend. Matter of fact, I do want 
the uh, any of the uh, information in the vertex cache for this particular patch that may have been created to stay there. I don't want to remove it at all because we may turn around and want to load that patch again at some point in time. So I'm going to leave that information there for now. But I do want to remove this patch from the patches dictionary because if I don't do that, the handle train panning method will not requeue up that patch. So what you'll find is holes in your terrain. So this will just simply go patches dot remove position. So all it's going to do. And I'd rather have a method that we force somebody to call because they have to think about this as opposed to giving overall access to all of our patches from another class because somebody could accidentally come in here and clear our entire patch dictionary. Right. And that probably would not uh, be a good thing. Just a guess. All right. So with that in place, let's jump over to our patch builder. I want to modify our patch builder as well because I want to pass in a vector 3. Now the vector 3 that I want is going to be our player position just like we did with our train manager in update we need to know where the player is so if we're going to be calling out our queue based on the player position it would help to know our players position so we'll go in the train demo now and we'll fix this and we'll basically just pass in the same thing again but just like Train Manager fixed update, patch update gets the same thing. So that'll make that happy. Now, and uh, let's see. I don't need Google. Google's not going to help me in this case. All right. Now, we need to get a couple of parameters. We've got player's position, but we need to know what direction the camera is looking. Luckily, we have that code already. Right here. Let's copy that again. I could probably put this into a method and attach it to my camera too. At some point I might even do that. But uh, all right. So this will be our camera's forward direction. We'll do a check that is going to loop through everything in our queue. So again, it's going to be a reverse iterating loop. And we'll look at our Q dot count minus one. And then we'll do, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this particular thing? So, yeah, let's do a variable. So this will be our patch. And that will be based off of Q sub i dot um, I'm missing something patch builder why is this still oh yeah 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 I got it um, trust me I know what I'm doing <laughs> famous last words right okay I need to cast this as a patch dispatch There we go. Now I've got access to my train patch. That makes things a little bit easier. All right, so that gives us our train patch. Now, from here, let's do some checks. We're going to check to see whether or not we... What checks did I say we're going to do? We're going to check to see if we're still close enough. So I need to do a check on our range. So I can do vector two. Well, let's see, player position. So I also want to modify this. So let's make another bar up here. Bar position equals new vector two. And if you guys haven't figured it out, I am winging this too. So player position dot x comma player position dot Z. All right. So that will give us our position. So if vector two dot distance, 
we will compare our player's position, which is POS, with our patch's position, which will be patch dot. Oh, now I need that too. Um, and I'm going to need this multiple times, so let's make a variable for it. So bar, oops, not bar. Yeah, I want to go to the bar. <laughs> patch position equals new vector two. And this will be patch dot position dot x comma patch dot position dot z. There. And now I'm thinking about margaritas. <laughs> stay focused, Lee. Stay focused. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry. Most of you guys are probably too young to know what that is from. Jason's all quiet. I'm surprised you don't know what it's from. Well, I'm real young. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Older than I am. Whatever. All right. Hey, by a couple of weeks. All right. So we're going to check to see if our distance is greater than our range. So that will be config. 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 Come on, work with me here. Work with me. Config dot get int. Or did I make it a float? I think I made it an int. Yeah, I did. All right, this will be our hold range. Uh, do I want hold range? No, interest range. Interest range. So if we're outside our interest range, we are not going to make this patch. So that will be our first check. So if we're greater than our interest range or our second check is going to check to see if we are outside of that um, rotation. So the code for doing that, again, is inside of train manager. Kind of looks like this. So I'm not going to type this all over again. Reduce my margin for error. All right. Now I need to compare our position, which is the player's position, with the patch position, which is this one. Normalize it, and then we'll check to see if it's greater than or equal to 5. So if that is the case, then we need to do two things. We need to go ahead and remove this particular item from the queue. So that will be Q sub I. And we need to rescind it. But I don't want to rescind it yet. I want to play with this and see if this works before I start rescinding stuff. So give the train editor a sec to fire off. Here's our train. Now I'm going to have some fun with the camera. So you can see that it's like going, hey, you moved the camera really fast, so this is all the stuff I'm not going to draw. But on the flip side, it says, oh, okay, I removed it. I'm not going to draw it. But because we didn't rescind that out of our patch and remove it out of our patches dictionary, it's never going to get requeued. So we get a whole bunch of holes in our train. Not ideal. So let's go ahead and we will also take our train manager and we will resend this patch, which is going to be our patch position. So now if I jump back and hit play. Give it a sec to fire off. And here we go. Wait for it to load in. Whip the camera around, come back, and it still broke. Nice. Oh, there it goes. Here we go. Got it filled in, except for that one. Why didn't you want to fill in? <laughs> oh, I love it when it does that. One patch. What did this one patch not like? Hello, Mr. Patch. Are you here? Nope, not there. Okay, uh, good question. Now I don't know why that one broke. 
can we call it a fluke and not figure it out? <laughs> so. You know, it's stuff like that that drives me nuts. All right. I'm going to have to test and see if I can make that happen again. That will be fun. All right. So my rescind patch is removing it from here. Hmm. All right. I'm going to finish the next part. And then I'm going to see if I can replicate it. Otherwise, we can be here for a while as I, you know, load, stop, and right, right. wing the camera around. So let's move on for a second, then we'll come back and revisit that. All right. Now that we've, you know, somewhat successfully culled out uh, patches out of our queue, we want to be able to sort the order that these patches are going to be drawn in. To do this, we're going to do var patch. So we're going to create a variable to hold our patch. We're only going to do one patch per update. Now I'm going to go through our queue and I'm going to order our queue by descending, which means I'm going to need, uh, really, you're going to find i do something I can spell. Change all to where wall local. No way. Come on. All right. Fine. Using system. Is it not link? Yeah, there we go. Link. Now will you cooperate? Order. See, now was that that hard? Sometimes I swear. All right. So we're going to order by uh, we're going to order by descending. Now what we're going to order by descending is going to be p goes into or oh geez this again. All right, hold on. Um, I hate typing. So whenever I can do it, avoid it. I will. So we're going to order by descending. And this is going to be our patch. So this is p dot. Uh, geez, I got to cast two. And there. And this is going to be a patch dispatch dot. Um, oh. dot train patch dot position wow well, I'm making this very complicated um, is there an easier way to type this in hmm. I know one way This way I don't have to do casting. <laughs> oh, Pat, no, not patch filter. Patch dispatch. There. Okay, now I don't need to cast anymore. Yay. Hooray for me. <laughs> yes, I've lost my mind. It seems so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's entertaining, is it not? That's right. All right, so are you not entertained? <laughs> I don't even remember what movie that's from. But uh, what do, I think Gladiator, is it? I don't remember. Hmm. No clue. All right. Um, position? It, what's that? Yep, it's going to be position. But this position needs to be casted down or converted into a vector 2. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, actually, for now, I'm going to cut it. New vector 2. Paste that, dot x, comma. Paste it again, dot z. All right, now let's clean this up a bit so we can see what's going on. 
All right, so order by descending, P goes into vector two. Let's go to here. Let's wrap this to about, uh, we're just going to make sense of this. So about there, so minus new vector there. So that gets us up to about here. I'm going to wrap this one down to about there. And that gives us our normalized. Okay, well, that's the first part. <laughs> what that's going to do for us is it's going to order. Uh, seriously, Resharper? Um, there we go. That's all I wanted to do. Okay, that's that first part is going to order by our position relative to our camera. Basically, I've shown how that this returns a value between 1 and negative 1, depending on the angle between the two uh, vectors. Those vectors being the camera forward vector and then the direction to the patch. That's what the position minus this new vector is doing. It's giving us a direction that points from the player's position to that um, to that patch. Then what we're doing is I'm going to order descending knowing that if the direction to the patch and the direction the camera is facing is perfectly in line, the number I'm going to get is going to be a 1. And the further I get away from pointing towards the camera, the lower those numbers are going to go until eventually they reach negative 1. So by sorting descending, I'm going to ensure that whatever is directly in front of my camera is going to get drawn first. And as I move off to the sides of that line, those patches are going to get lower priority and are going to get uh, rendered after everything that's in line with the camera. Now that's the only or not, not the only sorting that we're going to do. That's just merely the first one. The next one we're going to do is we're going to do an order by. Now this time we're going to go ascending as opposed to descending. Now this one will again be P goes into, no, not position, P goes into our distance calculation. Now, now I'll just type this one, vector2 dot distance. Now the distance that we're going to be checking is going to be our position, position which is POS. So we're going to take our player's position and we're going to compare that to our patch's position. And luckily I've gone through and made this really simple to understand uh, pre-wrapped sort of thing here. Now, try and patch, why are you not happy? Oh, I don't need two dots there. That will make a little bit better. All right, so now we're going to order by our distance from the cam or from our player. So we're checking the distance from our player to our patch, and we're going to order ascending. So the closer you are, the lower the number. So those are going to get rendered first. And the further away, the, the later that you're going to be drawn. So first we sort by how close you are to the direction the camera's facing. Then we sort um, the patch by how close it is to the player. And we're going to do one more just for fun because it's so entertaining. This time we will do an order by descending. So just like this one. I don't want to script the typing. So order by descending. And this will be P goes into. And apparently I missed something here. Why are you not happy still? Do I need one more? Yeah, okay. So this last one that we're going to do is going to be based off of priority. So we're going to look at our train patch dot priority. Now, 
real quick. If I jump over into threading and we look at our priority queue and we look, low priority has a value of zero, medium has a value of one, high has a value of two. Just because numbering starts with zero if we don't define the values. I haven't defined the values there. So low zero, medium one, high two. So I want high priority um, to take precedence over everything else. So that's the first one. This will be our last sort. So this is going to be the most prevalent. So after everything else, priority is going to be pushed to the top of the list, then distance behind that, and then the direction towards the camera after all of the rest of it. Now, once I've sorted this list, I need to return the first element from all of that. So I just return first. And all my lovely sorting and organizing just got all fixed by ReSharper. Wasn't that nice of them? <sighs> oh, man. Come on. Seriously? And it's ugly, too. All right. Um, that's a good one. How do you fix this mess? No, it's not OCD. <laughs> all right, close enough. All right. Now, once we've got all this sorted and we've done all this work just to return one patch back to us, but we need to make sure that patch isn't null. So we'll do if patch does not equal null, then we can go ahead and work with it. And what we're going to do is going to be patch dot run. And then Q dot remove patch. So we end that out there. Close that all up. Compile it. It seems to all work. Go ahead, jump back over. Hit play. Now you can already see that we're drawing out from the center. Mm -hmm. and we're, so we're drawing out from this center, and we're drawing out from the center line that our camera's facing. So if I select our camera, pan out, and I swing a little bit over here, we can see we're drawing out exactly the way we told it to. Very nice. Now comes the fun part. Can we break it? Or was that just a fluke for some reason? All right, so whip the camera around. And no, it doesn't seem like it's broken anymore. It looks like it's holding up really nicely. Yep. All right, so let's have some fun. Now, what were we... We were pushing 70 before when it started breaking, <coughs> right? Yeah, 70 was breaking it still. Okay, let's see what happens. Ah. <laughs> ah. Too late now. Yep. I fell off the edge of the world. <laughs> okay, so now what's going on? All right, so if I run in a direction, it's like going, you've made it worse. Interesting. Why is it not drawing out there anymore? But it draws there. Yeah, that's odd. 
Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Do you want to pause to troubleshoot it? Yeah, I think so. This is going to take a little bit, I'm, I'm guessing. Or actually, let's, let's just close this video. We'll come back in the next one and show what you find. Okay. All right, since this one's right at half an hour. All right, awesome. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.